All right, what's good, everybody? I've got something to talk to you about today. And I told you this video was coming. <laughs> um, I'm going to be responding to a tweet posted by PragerU. I don't talk about PragerU all that often, just in general, not for any real reason. They just don't come up on my radar in a way that makes me want to talk about them. Um, but the little bit that I have mentioned them, I'm sure you've seen, I've kind of disagreed with a lot of their takes. I think that when it comes to issues that relate to race or culture, they're usually off base. Um, so this, I found another example of that and I wanted to address this because I posted a tweet ye yesterday and I retweeted this tweet that they posted and I asked if I needed to explain why it was absurd. So what is the tweet to which I am referring? I'm gonna show it to you right now. Boom! An identity based on race is racist. Now, this is one of those tweets or messaging that you might see on social media that you might not think too hard about. And if you're not thinking critically, which a lot of us don't, myself included, because sometimes when you just when you're just chilling out and you're scrolling through and you're scrolling through Twitter, you don't really feel like thinking, right? I mean that that's just the way all of us are. But this is one of those tweets that kind of promotes a narrative that is prevalent on the right, and I want to correct it um, because it's important that on the right that people understand these things. Um, I make no secret of the fact that I want to turn the Republican Party and the and the right in general into something that Black Americans would consider supporting. And the way it is right now, it re repels more th more than than it attracts when it comes to Black America. Part of the problem is that we don't understand Black America on the right. A lot of what we know or think we know about the black community comes from people who also don't know much about the black community or people who will lie about the black community. Both are both kind of play into this. Although I will say that I think the majority of it is that it's coming from people who don't really understand the black community. Um, I'll, I'll be charitable in that regard. But like I said, I retweeted this tweet and asked if I needed to explain why it's absurd. And I got a pretty decent amount of responses. And a lot of them hit the nail on the head. A lot of my followers understood why this tweet wasn't really as relevant as the person who tweeted it might think. But I did get a lot of responses um, that showed me that I needed to do this video, basically. And I'm not knocking anybody. I, I, I understand why they said what they said. I don't think that there was any malice behind it. But a lot of them were like, well, it's correct, isn't it? I mean, what I mean, or what would happen if, you know, a white person based his identity on being white? What would, what would we call them? We call them racist. I understand that point. And um, there are some other responses to that kind of agreed with it. But I want to kind of highlight the assumptions that this tweet makes that are erroneous. And this will help us better understand that we need to communicate with the black community in a different way. The problem is that when we have misperceptions and misconceptions, then the arguments that they use and the messaging that we use and the conversations that we have are based on something that's not even a thing. That is, it's based on ideas that aren't real. It's based on things that we think are reality that really aren't, thereby missing the point and focusing on something that is not going to help us move forward. So there are three points I want to make about this tweet, and I'm going to make them as quickly as I can. But the first point is that nobody, and I mean almost nobody, considers race as their entire identity. I'll say it again. Nobody considers race as their entire identity. As a matter of fact, I would even go so far as to say nobody considers race as like 90% of their identity. This tweet is essentially parroting a popular trope that's been present on the right for decades. I noticed this even when I was a younger conservative. It's this notion that most black people define themselves almost completely by our skin color. This is a false narrative. I don't think that everybody who promotes this narrative intends to do it. 
again, I think a lot of this is a misunderstanding, but it is a false narrative nonetheless. Now, you may have heard that this is the case in the black community, but I'm here telling you that we consider race as only part of our identity. And if you, again, engage in some critical thinking and ask yourself some questions, you might ask yourself, what would happen if you went up to the average black person and asked them how they identify themselves? Well, yeah, they're gonna tell you they're black, obviously, that's what I would say. But they also might say, I'm black, um, I'm also American. I'm a husband, I'm a wife, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a Christian, I'm a professional. I work at such and such company. Here are some of my hobbies. Here are some things that I like to do. They will list off a host of other characteristics, just like every other American in this country. And each of those characteristics will have a varying level of importance. You're, but what I will tell you is that you're not going to find a black person who only identifies as their race in most cases. Yes, there might there, there might be some. There are some, I'm sure. But we're talking about a percentage of the population that is so minuscule that it's that is completely irrelevant. Therefore, this tweet is addressing a problem that does not really exist. It's a problem that isn't really a thing. And it causes more damage because again, it promotes a misunderstanding of the black community. Also, I will say that this tweet does betray a level of hypocrisy. In essence, PragerU and other conservatives who would make this statement are accusing blacks of that which they do themselves. You are, I've talked about this many times. Too many conservative influencers love to define black people by our race when it's negative. They will deceptively use statistics to push narr a narrative that crime, for instance, is an inherent component of blackness or of black culture. Now, depending on where they lie, some of them will use those statistics to imply that blacks are genetically more prone to crime or violence. Others who aren't willing to go that far will just say it's, an, like I said, an inherent component of black culture, violence and crime. So they are willing to judge us by the color of our skin when it relates to something negative. And I th again, I think a lot of them don't even realize that they're doing it. Now, I think some of the influ influencers do know that they're doing it and they don't care or they think that they're right to do it. And what's interesting about this, and you've seen me talk about this as well, if I say something positive about the black community, a lot of these people are very quick to come out in full force to correct me. I did this experiment last week. I, I spent a whole day posting negative things about the black community. They weren't true, but I was bashing the black community like I've seen a, lo a, a lot of other bl black conservatives do. Now, obviously I didn't mean what I was saying, but I, th there was maybe one or two conservatives who came out to correct me on that. None of them questioned what I was saying about black culture. They didn't say, oh, well, this isn't a black thing. This is an American thing or what have you. They only do that if you're talking about positive aspects of the black community. Or if I highlight a news story talking about a black person who did something good or who, or who accomplished something worthwhile. I, I mean, I saw a tweet that Mrs. Pinky posted, I think yesterday or the day before, and it was about uh, Simone Biles, who is a, is a wonderful uh, black gymnast, has, has broken records. I mean, she's done amazing things. And uh, she put a video on there and said, this is black culture. You've seen me use that hashtag, this is black culture, when I'm tweeting a story like that. And somebody responded, no, that's American culture. If Mrs. Pinky had posted a video of a black person beating up a white person and said, this is black culture, that woman would not have commented. I, I'm, I can, I'm like 98.76% sure that she wouldn't have. You don't get any pushback from conservatives on that. So this tweet by, by PragerU, again, is accusing black people of that which they do. 
The second point I want to make is that the majority of the majority of the time when black people are talking about being black, we are referring to culture, not necessarily race. Now, I'm going to say that again. The majority of the time when black people are talking about being black or the black community, they're referring to culture or a community, not necessarily skin color. Now, many people do make the mistake of missing the fact that when we're talking about being black, we're talking about cultural norms or or things that go on as a community and not necessarily the, the, the hue of our skin. And you know what? It's understandable. It, this is an easy mistake to make because the same we use the same word to describe both our race and our culture. The word black is used to, to, to describe our race and it's used to describe our culture as black Americans. Now, some people have used terms like African American um, to um, probably to, to maybe make it easier. I don't know why. Others have used ADOS, um, American descendants of slaves. There are a, a different there are different terms that we use, but black is the most common, obviously. And when I talk about when, when usually when I'm talking about black people, I'm referring more to the culture to which they belong, the subgroup of Americans not necessarily th their skin color. And black is it, black culture is a distinct culture with its own customs. We've got our own traditions and we've got our own norms, despite what some conservatives might have you think. Now, this culture came out of the fact that for the longest time, there was a separate America for black Americans than there was from white Americans. During slavery, that's where black culture started. It, even some of the norms that we had back then, it, like there are couples, and I, I was actually one of these people who get, who, there are black couples that will jump a broom when they get married. Now, I'm not talking about whether we, you should agree with that or not, but it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a throwback to how slaves used to get married. They jumped over a broom and that signified jumping into a new married life with your husband or your wife. That's a custom. That's a tradition that a lot of us still practice. And a lot of the norms that we have as black people come from slavery, comes from, and then it evolved over time, just like any other culture does. It doesn't mean that we don't adhere to American culture as well. I mean, we have a lot of different subcultures in the United States of America, but we also have certain norms that we tend to all do without even realizing it. Here's an example. When I was in my early 20s, I was actually, um, I was 20, actually 20 years old, went to Europe and I was in Italy and uh, it was my mom and I, and we were trying to figure out how to get to a certain place and I saw a police officer. So I was asking him, hey, how, oh, we're trying to get to here. And it's funny because he didn't speak English. But he also spoke French. So the little French that I knew was able, I was able to get the directions from him. But here's the thing. While he was giving me the directions, he was about this close to my face. Even when I backed up a little bit, he got closer. I was so uncomfortable. And you know what? 90% of Americans, black, white, Asian, <laughs> Latino, and otherwise, that grew up in America would have responded the same way because that's an American, we have an American sense of personal space that you're just not supposed to violate, right? Every one of us is like that. But in other countries, that's not necessarily the case, right? So that's just a, a little silly example of how we all do have an American culture, but we also have subcultures um, as well. Now, when we're talking about black culture, and we, and obviously I talk about it a lot because I have to debunk a lot of misconceptions that we have, but when we're talking about it, I can't tell you how many times I've had conservatives question the existence of black culture, when, but only when I mention it in a way that's not pejorative. If I were to criticize black culture, again, they don't come out and say, well, what about American culture? They say, they'll either say nothing or they'll say, yeah, there's an issue with black culture. <laughs> and they insist that we should just have one American culture. And again, they never say this to Black Conservative Inc. when they're bashing Black culture for Cardi B or fatherlessness or welfare or what have you. And they also don't say this to people from other cultures. I've, I've asked some of my Latino followers 
if they get this whole we should just be American thing and not Guatemalan or Mexican or or what have you. They they basically told me only a little bit, not very much, not the way black people get it. I think that a lot of people in America, and this includes some black people as well, they have a problem with the idea that there is a distinct black culture. It's not a separatist thing. It's just that it just is the way it is. It evolved that way because of the of what happened throughout history. So that's yet another reason why this tweet doesn't make sense because we're not identifying necessarily by our race. We're identifying by our culture. Like when you hear black comedians talk about, oh, well, this is how black people would do something versus how a white person would do it. They're not saying it's the, the difference is because of the skin color. <laughs> There's nothing inherent about the skin color that makes a, a, a black person not want to do something or do something a different way it's cultural it's just it's just the way it is and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that my last point that i want to make about this tweet is do not fall for the bs and again i talk about how we go through tweets and we don't really think critically about them but sometimes we have to now, this is the type of tweet that a lot of right-leaning influencers will put out to imply, and the, and, the, and the goal is to imply that minorities are obsessed with race to the point that they become racist. They want you to think that if somebody says, oh, I'm pro-black, or I want to give back to my black community, or I want to support a black-owned business, or um, I don't like that the, the way the police treat black people, or the history of racism in this country has put white Americans ahead of black Americans, they want you to think that we're obsessed with our race, with our actual skin color. And again, there are some, so there are some black people who are. I'm, I'm not denying that at all. But... Most of us aren't. Even the ones who vote Democrat, most of us are not obsessed with the skin color aspect. We're concerned with discrimination. Whether you, whether we, uh, we, we agree about the level of discrimination that there is in this country, that's what they're concerned about. They're not obsessed with their skin color. So this stereotype is only true for a small section of the black community that does not represent the whole. And it shows a distinct lack of understanding of the black community that is far too prevalent on the right. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry, I guarantee you. I don't have any empirical evidence, this is my opinion, but still, I'm gonna guarantee you. I guarantee you that the people who craft these messages do not talk to black people unless they are the black conservative ink types which means they get a mostly inaccurate portrayal of black culture and the black community. They're not going to talk to, they, they don't generally talk to people like me about these issues. They're not talking to Hotep Jesus. They're not talking to Maj Ture about this stuff. The people who put out these messages are actually playing on the reality that most conservatives who see that type of tweet will just nod their heads without actually questioning uh, what's been said. Now again, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that they're doing this on purpose because they don't actually, because they don't actually believe it, or they're purposely trying to, to deceive you. Some of them are, but again, I'm not gonna say that the person who posted that tweet on behalf of PragerU that that was their intention because I don't know that. Either way, it's inaccurate and it's harmful to the conservative movement. And yes, this this happens on the left too. The left does the exact same thing with different issues. They also misrepresent the black community as well, in my estimate, estimation. But right now I'm talking about the right. I don't have a say in what goes on on, on the left. So don't be that person who just nods along. And you know what? I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When you see a conservative influencer talking about the black community or about black culture, and they're putting forth an idea or an opinion, you should immediately take it with an entire vat of salt because it's highly likely that they're steering you the wrong way. Now, we should always question what they say. Honestly, we should. Do your own research. And you know what? What I'm saying sounds cynical, but hell, do that. Do it to me too. You don't just have to take my word for stuff. I tend to research what I say and I and I and I provide sources. But you can look at the sources that I provide or and you can also do extended research as well. But I am going to tell you that conservative ink in general does not know what it's talking about when it comes to the black community. 
In most cases, they don't. I'm not saying everybody. I'm sure there, there are some, but they're giving you a misleading message. And I think that these folks do a lot of damage on these topics. And the reason why is because much of their messaging is reliant on stereo on stereotypes and not necessarily on truth. So I just wanted to, to leave you with that. I wanted to explain uh, more deeply why that tweet is an issue and why it is absurd. Again, my three points, nobody considers race as their whole entire identity. Also, when people are talking about black culture or, be, or being black, they are referring to culture, not necessarily the skin color representation of that culture. Third, don't fall for the BS. Whenever you see a conservative anchor talking about black culture, and by now, if you follow me, you kind of know who these people are. Again, I'm not attributing malice to them. I, I'm, I'm giving some grace here. I think a lot of this is just because they don't know. They were taught the wrong way. But you got to take it with a grain of salt. Well, no, with an entire vat of salt. And like an ocean's full of salt. <laughs> Check it out. And think deeper about what they're saying and, and question. There's nothing wrong with questioning. And like I said, you can do it to me too. Do it. I mean, I, I, I'm confident enough in what I say that I can tell you to check out what I'm saying. And you'll find out that I'm right. <laughs> At least in most cases. I don't know. Depends. But just wanted to leave you with that. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions or if you want to push back, that's fine too. Or if you want to add something to it. Um, because I can't cover every single thing in, in just one video. Let me know. Let me know. But until next time, keep your minds free. Oh, 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 oh,